All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started here. Uh, appreciate you joining. My name is Josh Wise. I'm the VP of Client Services here at Redstream. Been here a little over 11 years now. Purpose of these webinars, for those of you that may be new, are to cover uh, usability within the reservation software, specifically the cloud reservation software and online booking engine. Um, the goal here is to make sure that you guys are using the product to its best ability, making sure that you're learning new things that come out as well as staying updated with common trends, things of that nature. Uh, we do record these webinar sessions and post them within the reservation software uh, within about 48 hours. Um, so for those of you first time here, if you come up here to the top right, and you click on this little bell icon here um, and see and view latest news and updates. Um, here is where we post our bigger recent releases. Here in the cloud updates is where we cover everything from a release. And here is where we're showing the most recent usability webinar recording. So if you ever get uh, cut off in the middle, you get busy, you gotta jump off, or if you ever miss one, this is a good place to come and, and hunt things down. Okay, uh, so what I want to talk about today, guys, is I want to cover um, kind of reopening a little bit with your properties. Hopefully you guys are either already opening or thinking about gearing up for opening. And I want to talk a little bit about the options of what it is that you can do within the reservation software to kind of create a contactless experience, okay? Um, so what I mean by that is, as guests are starting to come back to your property, <clears throat> you start opening back up, uh, everyone's got a little bit of different concerns, uh, everyone's got a little bit of a different mindset as it relates to this pandemic and COVID-19, uh, what interactions they want to have and don't want to have, and that's okay, we all have our, our own thoughts on that, but we should be respectful of everyone else. And so as we're kind of going through this and talking to various different properties, people are asking for advice, consultation, uh, asking what can and can't be done within the reservation software. So I wanna make sure that I share that with as many people as possible. So that's kind of what we'll cover here today. Uh, I'll do my best to keep this 30 minutes or less, respect your times, I know everyone's busy. Um, try and make these short and snackable and as impactful as possible. Um, before I kind of get going here, I wanted to put up a poll and just kind of ask here and see for those of you just to kind of get an understanding of when it is you'll be opening back up. So I'm going to launch a poll here. Uh, you should be able to see that. So if you would please go ahead and, and answer that question there. When is it that you're going to be open back up? Maybe you already did. Maybe it's later this month, next month, the month after, or maybe you're not too sure. Go ahead and answer that for me. I'll give you about 10 more seconds. Okay, so what I'm seeing on my end is uh, it looks like um, half of you are going to be opening up this month or already have opened and the other half of you are opening up in June, which is absolutely phenomenal. Um, so let me share those results with you so you guys can see. Now, uh, for whatever it's worth, <clears throat> something that we track here at Redstream uh, with our 600 plus clients across the entire country. Um, and, and about a handful overseas or outside of the US. Uh, booking trends is what we track. So through our software, we're able to see all customers uh, reservation booking trends. And about the third week of March, they basically went <clears throat> non-existent and no one was making bookings, which makes sense based on the timeline of the pandemic and cancellations were through the roof, right? Um, which I'm sure most of you or all of you experienced in some fashion. And what was interesting is, is although in my mind, we were in the thick of it in April, we started to see reservations taking place again at the end of April uh, for the future, which was interesting. So it wasn't that people were necessarily traveling in April, but they were starting to make reservations again, both calling the properties and online. Um, so I thought that was really interesting. And so what we're expecting here and the trends that we're seeing into May is those reservations are continuing to increase here. So 
Uh, as it relates to you and your business, maybe you've experienced some of that, maybe you're experiencing none of that. I think the point that I wanna share here is that that's positive news. That's a great trend that we wanna see. And the fact that we're seeing that across the board um, from all of our clients around the country, it's only gonna get better from here. So there, there's hope and things are turning around. So that's great. Okay, let me get this out of your face here. Okay, uh, so the first thing I want to cover today as it relates to kind of reopening here um, and kind of doing some contactless things is I want to talk a little bit about automatic emails, right? Um, so for those of you, hopefully all of you are using it, but for those of you that aren't, um, automatic emails or email scheduling is the ability for the reservation software to automatically fire out um, some type of correspondent based on your letters and your templates that you have set up um, at the time frame that you want. And I want you to think about this prior to arrival, okay? Um, so over on the left-hand side in the navigation, if I come down here to configuration and I scroll to the bottom here, we'll see emails and letters section. Um, and all of you should have this already set up. And if you don't or you need some help, reach out to the support team and they'll help you out. But basically the concept is, is that you create a template and the template is your branding. It's the foundation. It's the wrapper, if you will, of what the letter itself sits in. So the template should have your logo, some basic contact information, maybe a nice picture of the property for branding purposes. And then the letters themselves, those are the correspondence in which you're communicating out to your guests. So whether it's a a confirmation letter, a thank you letter, a pre-arrival letter, um, a cancellation letter, gift certificate letter, whatever. You can have all those variations. Um, so, so that's how those things work. And then what you can do once your templates and your letters are set up, you can then come in and you can schedule these to be fired off, right? And so as you're moving to reopening or you're opening and you're thinking about, okay, how can I respect my guests? And how can I create as much of a contactless experience as possible for these people, uh, especially during this check-in, so that I'm not putting my myself or my staff at risk, and I'm not putting my guests at risk, and everyone feels comfortable. I want you to think about how you could use these automatic emails, right? So the way in which that these get set up here, guys, is you can come up here in the right-hand corner and hit add a schedule. And then what you do is you have uh, several different options that you need to configure here. So as an example, what you're doing is the first thing is you're picking a letter. So your letters need to be set up in advance and those letters are automatically tied to the template in which you've chosen. And what you wanna do here is you wanna select the letter that you want to go out to people, right? So in this particular example, I think what we would do is we wanna send a pre-arrival confirmation, right? So we want to try and minimize the contact that these people are going to have with us. And on this pre-arrival confirmation, we'll talk about some variations, but let me finish going through this setup here. And then after you select your letter, what you want to do is you want to pick how many days uh, either before or after you want this letter to fire off. So in this case, it's pre-arrival. So we need it to be before the actual stay starts. Now, me as a consumer, and I'm just speaking for myself, I have no statistics around this, okay? This is my own personal opinion as a consumer. If you fire something off to me seven days in advance, there's no way I'm looking at it. Very little to no way I'm looking at it. I'm not even thinking about it. For me personally, guys, I'm not even packing till basically the day before. Um, so for me, if you send me something two days or one day before I come out and stay, I'm ecstatic and I'll be looking forward to it and it's on the top of my mind. Anything in more advanced than that, I don't really care and I don't want to look at it. Now, again, that's my own personal opinion. I'm not saying I want you to live off that by rule, okay? But in this example, let's say we want to send a pre-arrival confirmation. We want it to go out two days before and um, the triggered events would, uh, event would be the arrival date, right? Because we want it to be before you come and stay. And then you can select the time that you want to go. It defaults to 9 a.m. based on statistics that we looked at. That's a great time to be firing off emails to people that aren't kind of salesy, right? A lot of that stuff is in their inbox already when they first come in. Let's assume people are coming in at 8 a.m. This time frame is based off your business time that you set your database to. Um, so keep that in mind. But this would be an example of a pre-arrival confirmation letter that I would want to fire off to all of my guests 
And so what will happen is, is the system is intelligent enough to know that two days before every reservation, this pre-arrival confirmation is going to go out. Okay. Now, <clears throat> some things to think about here that we've had conversations uh, with other properties about is uh, maybe you want to include some instructions, right? Um, instructions could be anything from Here's where I want you to go to check in. Here's how our check-in process is going to work now uh, compared to the past or what you may have experienced with the whole pandemic thing going on. Um, so you kind of want to give these guys some guidelines of what it is that you want them to do, especially as you're kind of coming back and every property is going to be different, right? So for guests, they have the old school, what they're used to pre-pandemic, right? And then now that they're coming out of it, as they start traveling again, all these properties, including yours, is going to be a little bit different from the next because you guys have the opportunity to control what you want that experience to be like. So don't assume people know what you want from them. You need to clearly lay that out for them. And, and we should not assume that everything is going to be normal as it always has been in the past, right? Um, so let's clearly lay out some instructions of what we want them to do. Other things to think about that should be included in this um, pre-arrival confirmation letter is um, what kind of signatures do you require? Okay, and how is that process now look? So as an example, a lot of you guys do uh, registration cards where not only are you confirming uh, who it is that's coming, um, but you're also getting updated contact information. And then you're basically saying, hey, I want you to sign and agree to my uh, basically rules that I have here at my property, right? So is that something that you've historically gathered? Um, and if so, now you've got a couple different options, right? So A, do I really need that during this pandemic? Do I need people to sign something? Do I want them to print that out? And I can include that here in my pre-arrival -conf pre confirmation letter and have them bring it. Well, me, I don't have a printer at my house, so that wouldn't work for me. Um, so what other people have done is they're putting their registration uh, kind of card, if you will, on their website. Um, and then they're asking people to kind of either sign it digitally or print it out as an option. Um, so that's something to think about. Is that something you want to have a link in this pre-arrival confirmation letter and you want to link them off to their website where they can either print it or digitally sign it, agree to those things? Or do you still want to have them show up and physically sign something? And if so, you need to explain that uh, kind of in this process, right? Something else to think about here, guys, is um, what are your instructions going to be as it relates to taking payment? Um, are, you, are you going to continue to take a deposit payment and final, final payment at check-in? Maybe you were taking a deposit and final payment at check-out. Has that changed at all? Do you want them to come down to the front desk? Are you going to grab a credit card from them and now uh, your staff or you as well as the guest are you know, switching things back and forth? Are you going to try and eliminate that process? So there's some things to think about. Also keys, right? Um, do you need to, to get a key card for them? Do you have a physical key that they need to get? Are you going to hand that to them? Uh, are they going to go and look for it in a certain location? Maybe you've got uh, specific uh, keypads on the door where they can kind of enter those things. Maybe you've got some type of a mobile uh, key lock system. So you need to kind of walk people through what those expectations are. And I think keep in mind here, as we kind of start coming out of this, a lot of people are still nervous and they're hesitant and just because they decide to travel doesn't mean that they aren't concerned and they're not going to be wearing masks and they don't want to be in contact with you or touching the same things in which you're touching. So you need to be very aware of that and you need to start thinking about that if you haven't already. And we need to get this stuff down in writing and we need to guide people and, and knowledge is power, right? Knowledge makes people comfortable. So me as a consumer, the more you explain to me what it is that I should expect in small snackable information bullet points, not long paragraphs and five pages deep, uh, that makes me feel comfortable that, okay, these people know what they're doing, they're thought about it, they appreciate uh, where my mind is at around this, and this is really making me feel comfortable, right? So as part of scheduling an email, you can come in here and you can pick the letter it is that you want. The letter needs to be created in advance. You can pick how many days before the actual arrival date and the time at which this letter is going to fire off. And this thing's going to go to everyone, right? So you want it to be some some common basic uh, standard practices or updates to your processes and procedures of your check-in 
and you need to walk people through that, right? And then also as it relates to any of you that are doing registration forms or cards, I want you to really think about, is that something that I absolutely have to have during this time? And if so, what's the easiest way for me um, to convey that to people and get that information without really having to go through the whole front desk check-in process, right? Okay, so that's the first thing I wanted to cover today. The second thing I wanted to cover today is related to payments, right? So all of you are taking payments in some fashion. Our reservation software is flexible enough to be able to offer a couple different options. <clears throat> Excuse me. The first option that we have is um, we have what's called integrated credit card processing, okay? And what integrated credit card processing is, is you have basically connected with our third party company, our gateway provider, Shift4, and you have basically said, I want all payments to be processed right here through my reservation software securely. If I type it in, I can then from that point have that card in here and I can click a button and automatically run payments. Or if it comes in through my online booking engine, it automatically downloads into the reservation software. I don't have to swipe a card. I can click a button, right? So for those of you using integrated credit card processing, you really are set up ideally here in the fact that once you get a phone call reservation, you can take that initial payment or type that card in, right? whether you're taking a deposit or not, or if you get an online booking engine, that credit card information is automatically downloading uh, into the system how we secure it through tokenization. And that way when people come and show up, you don't have to actually physically take a credit card from them. Your staff is not touching anything, you're not swiping anything, you're not keying anything in, as well as you're not handing anything back to guests that might make them nervous about that whole process and they're gonna go, hand sanitize or squirt that credit card down, right? Um, so ideally the best scenario is, is integrated credit card processing. For those of you who use it, um, you can envision how that works and how you won't really have to engage with the customer as it relates to physically grabbing a credit card, right? Um, for those of you not using credit card processing, maybe you're using our forward option. And forward option is basically for those of you that don't want integrated credit card processing, you want credit card processing to be handled outside of the reservation software, meaning that you have a terminal or you have a virtual terminal where you're swiping cards or you're keying card data in, right? As it relates to the online booking engine for you forward users, you have to log in through a secure portal, you have to retrieve the credit card number, and then you have to go take the manual steps. That's not necessarily ideal. However, the point that I'm getting to here, guys, is that with uh, the online booking engine, okay, we have the ability to take specific deposits, right? And for those of you using integrated credit card processing, you can basically have the online booking engine take 100% of the reservation at, or of the, yeah, 100% of the payment for the reservation at the time of the online booking, right? So as people are coming, maybe historically you've taken a deposit payment and then final payment at check-in or check-out, maybe you've taken no payment, you have no skin in the game, you don't take anything until they come and show up. Maybe you're pre-offing and posting later uh, like larger chain hotels do, but regardless, you have the ability here to come in here and change your deposit settings if you're using integrated credit card processing. And basically you can take the entire amount uh, by making some changes here. So I can change this deposit and I wanna say, maybe I want this to be my 100% deposit um, as it relates to COVID. And this is only something I see internally. So this isn't something anyone else sees, right? So the due date is uh, number of days after the reservation created, number of days prior to the reservation arrival on a specific date. So you can basically say at the time of the reservation here, I want to take 100% of the reservation total and I want it to include everything, right? So if I put number of days after the reservation is required and I change this to zero, Basically what that means is that's saying at the time of that online booking, I'm going to take 100% of that reservation. And again, for those of you using integrated credit card processing, that the booking engine will automatically take that, right? So maybe that's something that you do to respect your guests and avoid having to um, exchange credit cards and guests aren't going to be scared away by this, right? They're going to appreciate this 
Um, and so maybe you make these changes and you try it. And then if you don't, if you get someone complaining, then you can reach out to them and kind of go through it. If you get a bunch of people complaining, you can obviously adapt this on the fly. But this is absolutely something people are trying and something that I would encourage you to try as well to mitigate the need for having to have contact during that whole check-in, check-out process, right? For those of you on non-integrated processing, unfortunately, you don't have this option. If that's something you'd like to move towards, reach out to me and let me know, and we'll go ahead and start getting you underway on that uh, as it relates with shift four and, and paperwork and that whole process. Um, otherwise, you guys are going to have to think about how it is that you're going to kind of uh, interact with those guests. Non-integrated forward, you're going to have the credit card. Uh, you can process the whole thing at, at the time of the reservation as well. Or you can take a deposit and process it at kind of check-in when they actually show up. But just go ahead and let those people know you already have their credit card number and you do not need to grab that credit card from them. So that will make them feel comfortable. So that would be a, a little bit of you guys adapting as well. So there are still some options, but you still have those manual steps involved uh, if you're doing the non-integrated credit card processing, right? Okay, uh, last thing that I wanna kind of cover here is um, I want you guys to be thinking about within your reservation specifically here, um, if your process historically on checkout has been to, you know, kind of run your final payment, print out an invoice and hand them a physical copy, I would completely go away from that in its entirety here. And I would move specifically to uh, moving over to emailing these guys, these confirmations. So within the reservation themselves, as you very well know, I can come up here and I can fire off an invoice letter um, to the email that I have on file for them. That way there is no printing. So not only are you saving trees, but you're also being mindful of all the contact, you touching the paper or your staff, handing it over to them, them touching the paper. People, are, people, as we come out of this, don't really want to engage. They don't want to be standing in front of you. They don't really want to be touching the same pens and papers and cards and things of that nature, right? So I want you guys to be mindful as we kind of come out of this thing. I want you to be thinking about how you can adapt your process and procedures. Now, for some of you, you may have been doing the same thing for the last year, five years, a decade, two decades, right? And that's okay that's okay, just because you make some uh, adjustments to your processes and procedures as you kind of come out of these things to make people feel comfortable, make sure that those reviews on TripAdvisor are always positive. You wanna see things like, oh my God, they were so aware of this pandemic and the COVID-19 and they had this whole contactless check-in and check-out process. I'm so thankful for the health and safety of my family. Those are the reviews that you want, right? You don't want the things like, oh man, there was a front desk member and they were coughing, they didn't have a mask, on, I'm touching the same pen, the same credit cards, because then that's just negative and you're going to scare away those people that are really afraid of what's going on here. So for those of you that have had the same process and procedures for a long time, I want you to think about what you can do for a short amount of time. And it doesn't mean you have to do it forever if you don't want to. It's your business. You can do whatever you want, but really be thinking about the things that you can do to make people feel comfortable uh, and, and give those good reviews, which is just going to help get more reservations as things are kind of turning around here, right? Because I'm sure uh, that's important to all of us. So to review today, guys, um, I want to kind of just recap here. So we talked about going through automatic emails. So within configuration down here under scheduled emails, we have the ability to create a pre-arrival uh, letter automatic email um, that has various different settings here that we can go in and we can say how many days we want that thing to fire off and we can say what letter we want. So just a reminder, you need to already have that letter set up here, uh, which you likely already do. But on that letter, we talked about adding specific instructions what you want them to do, how the check-in's gonna go, the checkout's gonna go, the payment's gonna go. Do you have a registration card or form that you expected these people to fill out? Are you gonna do away with that? Do you want to put that as a digital copy on your website? Uh, do you want people to click that link and print it out and bring it in or can they digitally sign it through various different technology? Uh, give them instructions on how the whole payment thing's gonna go. 
Are you going to take all their payments, none of their payments, partial payments? Do you have to have them stop by the front desk at all or not? Where are they going to get their keys at, right? So those are all the instructions you need to kind of retrain people on what you want to do. Second thing we talked about is we talked about integrated credit card processing as well as we talked about deposit policies and how we can lean on the online booking engine for those of you using integrated processing to take 100% of the reservation so that way guests don't have to stop by, we don't gotta exchange credit cards. For those of you on non-integrated processing using forward, you already have the credit card through booking engine reservations or over the phone that you've gotten typed in. So you do not need to have them stop by, just let them know that, right? So those are some options as it relates to payments. And then lastly here, we kind of talked about the reservation and kind of the checkout process. And we no longer need to print this out, um, right? We can simply come up here once we're on a reservation or an invoice specifically, and we could say that we want to email this thing off. It'll automatically pull the guest contact you have on file and populate it. You select the letter or invoice that you want. And I mean, in general, guys, if I was you, I would be moving away from printing this stuff off anyways. Me, I don't keep any of that crap. It goes right in the trash. So literally, we're killing trees for no reason. Or maybe you still have guests that are in a certain demographic that appreciate the handout papers because they save everything. You could at least offer it as an option. Hey, do you want me to email this to you or would you like to print it out, right? So hopefully you guys are doing those things already or you're thinking about those things to kind of adapt your process, right? And then in general here, guys, um, that's all I have for you today. I appreciate you joining. Uh, if you missed any or jumping back in, it's recorded and we'll post that up here. And then in general, guys, if you have any ideas, comments, questions, concerns, you need any consultation, please feel free to email me directly at josh.wise at restroom.com or go ahead and give me a call. That's my direct line. I'm, I'm always uh, open to conversations, love to help out any way I can. I know these are crazy times and we're all going through it. So trying to share as much knowledge of what everyone else is doing and ideas and conversations that are happening and uh, uh, prepare you guys or allow you guys to, to make those choices and changes if you want. So greatly appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. If I can help in any way, please let me know. Otherwise, uh, stay healthy, stay safe, and, and have a great day. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.